Hello, David Harper of the Bionic Turtle with six theories about random variables. There are more than six theories about random variables. I'm picking theories from the financial risk manager exam and therefore theories that are considered to be relevant to a study of risk. For a random variable, in an early tutorial I used the easiest example, the simplest example I could think of aside from a coin toss, which is a six-sided die, single six-sided die. It's a random variable because before you roll it you don't know what the outcome is. Remember we characterized it with a uniform distribution. So the key point there was we use a probability distribution, in this case the uniform distribution, to characterize the random variable we can have two sets of questions about the random variable, so I'm, now I'm referring to the theories. First, questions about the expectation, and that's really what is the average expected value? Before I go roll a single die or several dice, what am I expecting? What's the average expected value of my outcome? We can also have a set of questions about the variance. That refers to the dispersion of the random variable. Do I have a broad range of outcomes? Or on the other hand, do maybe I have a tight, narrow set of outcomes? That dispersion, of course, as reflected in the variance measure, is very important in risk. The greater my dispersion, the more, I, the more risk I have. If we go to roll two dice, an early question will be, are they independent? Intuitively, we understand two dice to be independent. The outcome on this die is not going to affect the outcome on this other die. So these rolling two dice is typically independent or those variables are independent and by the way we typically denote correlation by the Greek symbol rho so correlation refers to the degree of independence or lack of independence between the random variables and that correlation can run from negative one which is perfect negative correlation up to 1.0 which is perfect positive correlation. Our dice are not perfectly correlated. What, however, if you just imagine if I took a welding gun and sort of welded this dice to this one so they moved together regardless, they were just physically welded, well I guess I've created perfectly correlated random variables. Okay, but our theorems are simple because we assume independence of the random variables. Of course, in finance, that's rarely realistic. Oftentimes, our variables are correlated, and in fact, in fact, this is oftentimes the biggest problem. If we think about the subprime, uh, recent subprime, and the credit crunch that ensued through all of these defaults on these uh, instruments like collateralized debt obligations. Well, a key factor there was those models assumed less correlation than in fact was exhibited. This correlate, this assumption about independence or the lack thereof is very important in finance. Okay, so if we, but if we do assume they're independent, we get some simple ideas here. For example, what's the expectation of x plus y, the sum of my two random variables? It's simply the expectation of x plus the expectation of y. So if I go back to rolling two die, if we roll two die at the crap table, for example, what are we expecting for a roll? We're, expect, we're expecting uh, the expectation on one die, which is its average, or three and a half, plus the expectation on the other, which is also three and a half. We're expecting seven. The key to that was independence. If they weren't independent, we would have another term out here. Now, we're not used to taking the product of two dice, but what if we did? What if we rolled two dice and we multiplied them together? What, do we, what would we expect as an average outcome? Well, the expectation of x times y is simply the expectation of x multiplied by the expectation of y. In our case, 3.5 multiplied by 3.5, or 12.25. Finally, if we have a constant c, as in the expectation of c times x, we can pull that constant out in front. Oftentimes we can do that with a constant. Now let's look at the variance theorems, theories. Variance is denoted typically by sigma squared. So as soon as you see that sigma squared, you know we're talking about a variance. If we didn't see the square, if we didn't see the power of 2 there, we'd be talking about a standard deviation. Notice the variance of random variable x minus y 
and the variance of the random variable x plus y, they are both equal to the same thing. It's not a typo. They are both equal to the variance of x plus the variance of y. So if you focus on this one on the right here, under independence, the variances can simply be additive. It's important. Under independence, I can simply add the variances. The difference between the random variables is also, under independence, just the sum of the two. You'll notice that that implies standard deviation or volatility is not additive since it's the square root. Therefore, if I say, what's the variance of a roll of two dice together, if I roll those dice together, we, can, we now understand, well, it's just the variance of one plus the variance of another. In our case, that'll turn out to be a little bit less than six. And so here's the formula that is the most important in this brief tutorial, which we're almost done with. Here's the really important theor uh, uh, theory that I'd like you to take away from this. The variance of the random variable x is equal to this on the right, which reduces to the expectation of x squared minus the expectation of x quantity squared. That's the formula for the variance of a single random variable. Because it might be abstract, let's just work it out. For, and as, as the example, I'm going to use the six-sided die. So a single six-sided die does, in fact, have a variance, believe it or not. And so all we need to do is apply that variance formula that I just looked at here. We need to calculate the expectation of x squared and subtract the expectation of x quantity squared. And let's do the expectation of x squared first. That happens to be right here in the middle because I have six outcomes. We're talking about x squared, so for each outcome I need to square it. If I roll a 1, that's a 1. I square it. 1 squared is 1. What if I roll a 2? Then I, the 2 squared is 4. I roll a 3. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36. Those are my six outcomes. Each one is x squared. What's the expected value of that? It's simply the average. Add all them up, I would get 91 divided by 6. The average or expected value of x squared is 15.17. Then I subtract the expected value of x quantity squared. The expected value of x is just the average value of a single roll of the die. We already know that's 3.5 because I just add them together. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 equals 21. Divide by 6. That's 3.5 quantity squared. See how it's a little different? Here it's the expectation of x squared. Here it's the expectation of x quantity squared. So that is our 3.5 squared. 15.17 minus 3.5 quantity squared gets out to, uh, solves out to roughly about 2.92. That's the variance of a single roll of a six-sided die. So that's the application of this critical formula that I wanted you to remember. And that concludes the brief tutorial on the six theories of random variables. Thank you.